Welcome to the patient information session for the Mount Sinai program for metabolic and weight loss surgery, a program of the Mount Sinai Health System. Have a pen and paper ready to take notes or write down any questions you might have. There will be questions to deepen your understanding of the material we are presenting. Later in the seminar, you will be able to write in your questions and we can answer them at your first consult. Thank you for choosing our program to care for you. We will do everything in our power to help you on your journey to a new, healthier life. Our presentation today focuses on the disease of obesity and available treatments for severe obesity. We will review surgical options, covering the advantages and disadvantages with each type of surgery. We will describe what you can expect from weight loss surgery and the commitments you will need to make to lose weight in the safest possible manner, and more importantly, to keep it off for the rest of your life. We will talk about the risks and complications associated with weight loss surgery, we will answer the questions patients frequently ask us. Lastly, we will tell you your next steps. Obesity has been classified by the American Medical Association as a disease that is rapidly spreading throughout the world. Know that you are not alone. Obesity has been recognized as a chronic disease. It is associated with many health-related problems, including type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure or hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, liver disease, high cholesterol, asthma, joint disease, and even certain types of cancer. We are sure that most of you here have tried everything possible to lose weight through diet, exercise, and even pills. The problem is that once you reach a certain level of obesity, those methods don't work long term. You eventually gain the weight back. Studies have proven that the most severely obese people who diet regain their weight. The only method that works long term is bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is a powerful tool that can help you lose a significant amount of weight and become healthier than you are today. Why will you be so much healthier? Because when a significant weight loss occurs, many of the diseases associated with obesity are reduced in severity or may even disappear altogether. Life-threatening diseases such as high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, asthma, and sleep apnea are often improved or resolved with substantial weight loss through weight loss surgery. Your risk of heart disease or even cancer may be reduced. To see if you are a candidate for weight loss surgery, the first thing we will check is your body mass index, known as BMI. BMI measures the level of obesity by comparing weight to height. You are a candidate for surgery if you have a BMI of 40 or more which usually means you are about 100 pounds overweight. You may also be a candidate with a lower BMI, between 35 and 40, if you suffer from an obesity-related health condition. Four main surgical weight loss procedures are performed in the United States. All the operations are usually performed through small incisions, a method called laparoscopic or minimally invasive surgery. With this approach, the surgeon inserts a small surgical telescope called a laparoscope inside the abdomen in order to view your organs. Through a number of other small incisions, access ports are placed in your abdominal wall. The surgeons place narrow surgical instruments about the diameter of a pencil through these access ports and use them to complete the surgical procedure. Performing weight loss surgery using laparoscopic, minimally invasive technique has become the standard of care because the small incisions cause less pain and trauma to your body. This shortens both your hospital stay and recovery time 
and helps reduce complications after surgery, such as a wound infection or hernias. How does weight loss surgery work? The operations do two things. The surgery reduces the size of your stomach, so you eat less and feel full more quickly. The surgery affects the chemicals or hormones produced in the stomach and intestines. The hormone changes can reduce your appetite, increase your feeling of fullness, and affect your body's control of insulin and blood sugar. Although these factors are very important for weight loss after surgery, we know that weight loss surgery works best when you make a commitment to long-term lifestyle changes. These changes include new, healthier eating habits and a regular exercise regimen that helps maximize weight loss and are key to helping you keep the weight off for the rest of your life. Choosing the right weight loss surgery for you depends on many factors, including your age, your medical and surgical history, your body mass index, commonly called BMI, and your nutritional and psychological profile. Your lifestyle and your wishes regarding the type of procedure may also influence the choice. Our role before surgery is to provide you with the information you need on each of the procedures based on the latest science and to be sure you have a realistic expectation of what the operation entails and what will occur after surgery. You are the most important part of the formula for weight loss success and you need to be comfortable with the chosen procedure. Now let's look at the different bariatric procedures that are available. We will review the details of each operation, as well as the positive and negative aspects of each. Finally, we'll review the risks of complications for each operation. Gastric bypass, also called Ruin Y gastric bypass, was for many years the most popular weight loss surgery in the United States. The Ruin Y gastric bypass involves using a surgical stapler to separate the stomach into two parts. The top part, called the stomach pouch, is the part that is used to hold food and is only about the size of a golf ball. This small stomach gives you the feeling of restriction so that you can feel full after eating only a small amount of food. In addition, the small intestines are cut and reattached in a Y shape. One arm of the Y is connected to the stomach pouch so that the food bypasses the lower part of the stomach and part of the small intestine. The other arm of the Y is connected to the lower, unused portion of the stomach. The digestive juices from the stomach, liver, and pancreas pass through the part of the Y and rejoin the food to allow digestion to occur. This happens at the connection you see at the bottom of the picture. The gastric bypass has been performed in this country using the laparoscopic technique since the 1990s. Based on current studies, it is estimated you will lose between 50 to 75 percent of your extra weight. The weight loss isn't instant, but takes one to two years. Of course, everyone is different, and it is important to remember that weight loss depends not only on your operation but on what you eat and how much exercise you get. The effects of this surgery are long-lasting, and although there is typically a slight regain of weight, many patients maintain at least 50% of their extra weight loss for 10 to 15 years after surgery. The Ruin Y gastric bypass usually takes about 2 to 3 hours to perform. Most patients are in the hospital for about 2 nights, and most return to normal activities in two to three weeks. After surgery, you will be on a liquid diet for the first day. Then you will eat pureed or soft food for about three weeks. It is necessary to take several different vitamins and minerals after surgery to make sure that you don't get any vitamin deficiencies. As with the other operations, we will see you one or more times during the first month after surgery then three more times during the first year.
After the first year, the visits are spread out to every 6 to 12 months. We usually consider this operation to be permanent, although in very rare instances, the stomach can be reconnected if medically necessary. The laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, sometimes called the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, or just the sleeve, is a widely accepted weight loss operation in the United States. Unlike the bypass, the sleeve only involves surgery of the stomach, not the intestine. In this operation, the left side of the stomach is removed. This leaves you with a banana-sized stomach roughly one-third the size of the original stomach. Weight loss is excellent, although slightly less than with gastric bypass, with patients typically losing about 50 to 60 percent of their extra weight over two to three years. As with any bariatric operation, it is important to remember that everyone is different. And your weight loss depends not only on your operation, but on what you eat and how much exercise you get. The sleeve gastrectomy is a simpler operation than the bypass because there are no reconnections or anastomoses between the stomach and the intestine. Also, since no part of the intestine is bypassed, there is lower risk of vitamin deficiency after sleeve. However, it is important to remember that the sleeve gastrectomy is a permanent operation. Once the left side of the stomach is taken out, it can never be put back in. The operation takes approximately two hours, and most patients are in the hospital for one or two nights. The diet after surgery is the same as with gastric bypass. Liquids for one day followed by pureed or soft foods for three weeks. Most people return to their normal activities in about two to three weeks. As with the other operations, we will see you one or more times during the first month after surgery then three or more times during the first year. After the first year, the visits are spread out to every 6 to 12 months. The adjustable gastric band, often called the lap band, was first approved for use in the United States in 2001 and has been used for a longer time in Europe and Australia. Although it was quite popular in the early 2000s, it has been falling in popularity because it results in less weight loss than with the other operations and a higher need for repeat surgery. The lap band is a small plastic and rubber ring that is wrapped around the top of the stomach to create a small stomach pouch. The inner part of the ring is an inflatable balloon which can be inflated or deflated to change the amount of restriction on the stomach. This balloon is connected by a tube to an access port which sits beneath the skin on your abdominal wall. When the band is initially placed, there is a small amount of fluid in the band so that the band is fairly loose. When you come to our office after surgery, we gradually inject more saline solution into the band to make it tighter. This is done by inserting a needle through the skin, just like when you have your blood drawn. As the band gets tighter, it restricts the amount of food that can pass through the opening from the esophagus into the small stomach pouch, which will make you feel full with only a small amount of food. When the band is perfectly adjusted, you will feel full quickly after eating a small meal. However, if it is too tight, food may get stuck and result in vomiting, swelling of the esophagus, and even slippage of the band onto the stomach. Weight loss with the lap band is lower than with other operations. Most patients can expect to lose about 40% of their extra weight over three years. That means, for instance, if you are 100 pounds overweight, you can expect to lose about 40 pounds. The operation takes about one to two hours to perform, and most patients spend about one night in the hospital. The diet after surgery is similar to the other operations. You will be on liquids for a short period followed by pureed or soft food for about three weeks. Most people return to their normal activities in about two to three weeks. Because the band needs to be adjusted frequently, you'll need to come back to the office more often than with the other operations. The goal is to find the perfect adjustment, not too loose and not too tight. Once you are eating regular food, 
You should see us monthly for the first six months, then every two months for the next six months. Adjustments to your band are typically done in the office, but it is sometimes necessary to perform these with the help of x-rays to ensure that the band is not being over tightened. The band can be removed if necessary. However, the band will leave scars around the stomach that can make future stomach surgery more complicated. Also, it is important to know that if the band is removed, you will most likely gain back most or all of your lost weight. The band was popular in the early 2000s before the sleeve gastrectomy was widely used. Many patients who previously would have been good candidates for the band are now offered the sleeve gastrectomy instead, since it provides better weight loss and does not require adjustments. The last surgical option we'll discuss is the biliopancreatic diversion with a duodenal switch, also called by its initials BPDDS. It is often referred to as the duodenal switch for short. This surgery is the biggest of any weight loss operation and combines a sleep gastrectomy with an intestinal bypass similar to a gastric bypass. Unlike a gastric bypass, much more of the intestine is bypassed. So if the food you will eat only passes through about 8 feet of intestines instead of the usual 15 to 20 feet, because of this you can expect to have significant malabsorption. This is good in that it means you absorb fewer calories from your food, but bad because it causes significant intestinal side effects. The reason that some people choose the duodenal switch is that it provides the best weight loss of any operation, usually 60 to 80% of your extra body weight. BPDDS is also the best anti-diabetic operation in that about 95% of patients achieve complete remission of their type 2 diabetes. The operation is more complex than all the others and takes longer to perform. Most patients stay in the hospital for two to three nights and are back to normal activities in about two to three weeks. The diet modifications and post-operative appointment schedule are similar to that for gastric bypass like the gastric sleeve, the duodenal switch operation is irreversible. Because the duodenal switch induces more malabsorption than the other procedures, the incidence of post-operative nutrient deficiencies is higher. Patients need to take more vitamins and supplements after a duodenal switch than with other operations. All these vitamins may cost $1,000 per year or more. Finally, patients notice a big change in their bowel habits after a duodenal switch, often having anywhere from two to six bowel movements per day and pass a large amount of bowel gas. And the duodenal switch patients may have a change in their body odor. Because of the great need for nutritional compliance and the possible unpleasant side effects, this operation is not for everyone. For super obese diabetic patients who are willing to take the required vitamins, minerals, and supplements after surgery, the duodenal switch is a viable option. Bariatric surgery operations just like any general surgical operation, have a risk of complication or serious side effects. Obesity surgery is real surgery, done in the operating room under full general anesthesia. This means that you go to sleep completely during the operation. There is even a small risk of death from bariatric surgery, although for most people this risk is just a fraction of 1%. Why do we do this surgery if it has risks? Because the benefits to your health from having the surgery far outweigh the risks of complication. You will be monitored carefully after the operation by nurses and doctors who are trained to look for signs of complications. We'll describe some of the complications that can occur after surgery. This list is not complete and does not include rare complications. First, we will review the complications that can occur within one to two weeks of surgery. Then, we'll review possible long-term complications. 
short-term complications within one to two weeks of surgery are similar to the risks of any general surgery operation, like getting your gallbladder out or having part of your colon removed. These include the chance of bleeding, infection, or injury to organs around the area where we operated. Also, any time we operate on the stomach or intestines, there is a small risk of leakage from one of the staple lines. If a leak does occur, it usually requires a trip back to the operating room to fix them and may require a lengthy hospital stay. Luckily, the risk of leakage is relatively small. Other complications that can occur with any of these operations include blood clots that build up in the veins of your legs called deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. In this rare event, a clot can break off from the veins in the leg and travel to the heart, where it blocks the blood supply to the lungs. This condition is called a pulmonary embolism and can be life-threatening. We can reduce the chance of this happening by giving you a blood thinner at the time of surgery, as well as leg compression stockings that reduce the risk of blood clot formation. You can reduce the chance of this happening by refraining from smoking and birth control pills before surgery and by getting out of bed and walking after surgery. A blockage of the intestines can occur any time we perform surgery in the abdomen from internal scars called adhesions or from abdominal hernias. In addition, wherever a cut is made on the abdominal wall, a weakness can develop that may allow the intestine or fatty covering over the intestine to protrude through the abdominal wall. This is called an incisional hernia and can also cause obstruction. These conditions usually require another surgery to fix the problem. The following complications can occur more than two weeks after bariatric surgery. Dehydration and the formation of kidney stones are possible due to your reduced ability to drink liquids and occur at higher rates than in patients who do not have this type of surgery. Also, rapid weight loss can cause stones in the gallbladder to form. Fortunately, most patients don't experience any symptoms from gallstones, but if pain or other problems occur from the stones, it may be necessary to remove the gallbladder to avoid future problems. In addition, ulcers can form in the stomach, especially with the use of alcohol, tobacco, or medications such as aspirin or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. All weight loss surgeries involve the potential for nutritional or vitamin deficiencies. That's why it is essential that you take vitamin supplements after weight loss surgery. For one month after surgery, all patients must take a liquid protein supplement. Once you transition to a solid diet, protein supplements should be decreased, and the amount of protein from real food in your diet should increase. Most bariatric surgery patients will take one or two multivitamins every day after surgery for the rest of their lives. You will also need to take calcium and possibly an iron supplement. Many patients are also given vitamin B12, which is added to the diet to prevent anemia. If you have severe vomiting after surgery, it is very important to contact your surgeon immediately so that we can make sure you don't have any dangerous vitamin deficiencies. As with any major operation, there is a small risk of death from laparoscopic bariatric surgery, which is about 0.1 to 0.2%. Luckily, the risk of death is much lower than it was 10 or 20 years ago. Now we'll review some complications that are specific to each type of bariatric procedure. Complications associated with the lap band include a mechanical failure of the plastic parts over time, which may require another surgery to replace the damaged part. Slippage is an event in which the band slips out of place on the stomach and causes pain or obstruction. In rare instances, the band can wear a hole through the stomach, called an erosion. Over the long term, the esophagus may stretch, causing permanent injury. Also, the pouch may enlarge, leading to food intolerance or weight regain. If any of these complications occur, surgery may be necessary to remove the band. 
Over the long term, some patients who have had the sleeve gastrectomy may develop significant heartburn or acid reflux as a result of the sleeve. Also, the sleeve itself may stretch over time, causing the patient to regain weight as a result of feeling less restriction. It is important to mention a condition unique to the gastric bypass called dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome can occur if you eat sugary food, eat too quickly or too much, or mix solid food with liquids at the same meal. Symptoms of dumping syndrome include diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain or cramping, flushing, sweating, and heart palpitations. To keep from getting dumping syndrome after gastric bypass, it is important to avoid sugary foods like cake or candy. We also recommend that you let 30 minutes elapse between drinking liquids and eating solids. With gastric bypass, the pouch may stretch over time, reducing your sense of fullness after eating. If it stretches too much, you may regain weight and a second procedure may be needed to tighten the pouch. For patients who have had the biliopancreatic diversion, there is much more malabsorption than with the other operations, which results in a much higher risk of severe nutritional deficiencies or chronic diarrhea. Because the BPDDS is a very big operation, it has a higher risk of complications up to and including death. It is reserved for patients who are willing to accept the numerous side effects and can strictly comply with the many required dietary guidelines. Here are answers to questions that patients frequently ask us. Can women have children after weight loss surgery? The answer is yes, but because of the rapid weight loss and significant nutritional deficiency that can result from these operations, we strongly recommend that female patients wait at least one to two years after surgery when your weight has stabilized. It is important that you use an effective form of birth control during this time after surgery to avoid pregnancies until that time. Even with these precautions, pregnancies after obesity surgery may be classified as high risk and a high risk obstetrician will need to be involved. Can I get rid of my excess skin? Excess skin is a common complaint when people lose large amounts of weight. The amount of excess skin varies depending on the elasticity of your skin, your age, and other factors such as the length of time that you have been obese, and whether or not you smoke. If you want to have the excess skin removed, you need to see a plastic surgeon. However, we wait until your weight loss has stabilized before sending you to this specialist. A plastic surgeon will typically require that your nutritional status is the best it can be at that point. You should know that insurance may not cover this type of plastic surgery unless a medical necessity can be demonstrated. Can I reverse the surgery if it doesn't work? You should think of weight loss surgery as permanent, even if it is described as reversible. In the case of a lap band, once the band is removed, patients usually regain the weight they have lost. Also keep in mind that revisional surgery to convert from one type of weight loss operation to another is associated with a much greater risk of complications than for first-time bariatric surgery. The higher risk is due to scarring of the stomach and other organs from the first operation. Call us to schedule your first appointment. In the meantime, you can get started by calling your insurance company to make sure that it covers bariatric surgery. We will be by your side through the entire process starting now. We would like to thank you for spending some time with us learning about bariatric surgery. It is important to remember that surgery for the treatment of severe obesity is a life-altering event 
it will likely result in significant and sustained weight loss, which in turn will help you live a longer, healthier life. But the surgery is only one part of the weight loss process. It is just as important to be careful about what you eat, exercise more, avoid smoking, and excessive alcohol. It is our mission to ensure that you progress through your weight loss journey in the safest possible manner. Your participation in the process and commitment to the lifestyle changes necessary for significant weight loss are the key to success. We look forward to working with you on your weight loss journey. Thank you for listening and for choosing us at the Mount Sinai Health System to care for you. We look forward to seeing you in one of our practice locations and assisting you on your journey to a healthier life.